Hey everybody and welcome to a new video and today we are going game hunting. Yes, um, we found a new game store. Well, I didn't find it. Actually, my buddy Ron knew about this store. I had no idea this store existed and uh, he said it was uh, pretty much like a hidden gem <laughs> type store, I would say. So I was really excited to go to the store and check them out. So here we are at Grand Games. Now, I wasn't knowing what I was going to expect coming in here. You know, Ron really pumped it up, but I wasn't really sure. But uh, when we got in here, one of the first things I noticed about this place is that it was clean. Yes, clean game stores are very important because it makes you, it gives you the sense that you can walk around freely and just like, you know, really look at stuff. When it's like cluttered up, you're kind of like, uh, I don't want to look around. But this store was freaking clean, awesome. Everything was neatly positioned. You could see prices of everything and it had a variety of stuff. Now, I'm not into the Funko Pop things or really any card type stuff, but it was nice to know it was there, maybe in case I take interest in the future. Not that that's likely, but um, this place will be a go-to place if I wanted to start that stuff. And here is the little Pokemon section. Uh, lots of Pokemon stuff you can see here. Uh, I should have picked up that Pokemon uh, pinball. here. that's a good game. But uh, other than that, I feel like th this was an interesting section, even though I'm not into Pokemon stuff at all. You guys have heard me talk about that on videos before. Now here's the Super Nintendo stuff. This is the stuff that's behind the counter and uh, the more expensive stuff, I would say. And I feel like I'm pretty much done with Super Nintendo and Nintendo, but you never know. There might always be a game that might intrigue you. And I took my time looking at this stuff just to make sure. Also wanted to ask, do you guys feel like Super Nintendo and Nintendo collecting have kind of died down over the years? Let me know in the comments. And then over here, we have 3DS games, uh, loose DS games. I knocked a lot of that stuff out in the past, so I don't really feel like there... Well, there is something I did buy here, which is showing right now, but you'll see that later in the video. Did find a game I really wanted. And then, of course, you have the Shining Soul series. I didn't really like Shining Soul Part 1. Part 2 is good. I'm thinking about the third game, Resurrection. Uh, you guys let me know if that's a decent game if you've played it. Here's a little bit of Game Gear, and here you can see the systems themselves. Uh, man, I never really hear about PSP collectors. You know, um, maybe we're a dying breed, but that was one system I had no competition to find stuff for, and I'm thankful for that. But other than that, I would love to know if anybody is a, is a PSP collector in the chat. Here's the retro of retro of systems, the Atari. Uh, this is like this section over here mixed with Xbox and Xbox 360. Had a lot of the older systems as well, so you can see that Atari. That was the one that actually you could just pl plug and play. Yeah, that's what they called them. But you can see some Atari games here, Strategy Guides, which I like to collect too. Uh, like to collect game magazines too, but just certain ones like Game Fan. That was one of my favorites back in the day. I could never find those. I still only have like two of them, the ones John Riggs gave me a few years back. Here's the Xbox 360 section. Now, a lot of people think I don't like Xbox for some reason. I don't know why that is, but I love Xbox. And um, I have a pretty good 360 collection of games. Uh, I, I, I've showed them in a video before, and um, hopefully you guys have seen that one. But I was looking through here, and now the only thing that crosses my mind when I see 360 games is that are they backwards compatible with the Xbox Series X, you know? Uh, I hope, like, most of the ones I have are, but, um, you know, it's just like, it just kind of gives that game a little bit of more evolution to play more on a modern platform, you know. Here's a look at the more common Xbox 360 stuff. Obviously, you'll see sports titles here, but they have a lot of cool racing games and other games as well. Dishonored. Um, what else do they have here? They had a lot of stuff that I got to briefly look at, but definitely if you want to like start a 360 collection, I would say this section is the best place to start if you want to do it on the cheap. There are a lot of good titles here. I'm really hoping that a lot of these, well, most of these are backwards compatible with the Xbox One, but we'll see in the future here. I really like that this store has all, like pretty much all their systems operating where you could like test out certain games, you know, to make sure they work when you buy them or just like if there's something wrong with the game you have. You could probably bring it in and get it checked out.
here's a loose disc section. I have a lot of empty cases, so I need to come back here and look at these again because they probably got a lot of the games I'm missing. Now, this expensive PlayStation shelf, you probably already spotted the, the crazy expensive game here. Which, which was funny is that when I saw this game, I didn't really pay much attention to it because I already own it. But my buddy was actually looking for this game, and uh, he was really happy about seeing it there. More on that later. The Vita selection here was really nice as well. Um, I feel like I'm pretty much done with that system. You know, I've gotten everything I wanted on it, and I looked at a lot of their PS1 stuff, and I'm, I feel like I'm done with that system too. Except when it comes to imports. There's a lot of imports out there that are just waiting to be picked up. But if there are any Vita collectors out there, let me know in the comments. And here is their PS3 section. A lot of the comments here. Lots of good games here. It definitely, if you're going to start a PS3 collection, I would definitely start with a lot of the comments because they're pretty much on the cheap. And there's a lot of really good games, actually. I should have took more time to look through here as well. But I did find something pretty funny. You guys remember Killzone 2 back in the day. Uh, the graphics in that one were like amazing and then when the game came out they weren't as good as the trailer but that was to be expected but definitely a good game here's some toys uh the starlink stuff uh you can see the, the disney infinity i don't know if those are still popular but uh yeah and it's some more current stuff uh well not the wii u that's a an old system but still people are actively looking for it and here are some games for it i don't think it has that many games for that system if you want to go for a complete set Kind of like it's close to the Dreamcast, I think. So a little bit over 100. Well, I'm not even sure. But uh, there's some Wii stuff here. Of course, I know you guys like GameCube. And, of course, the Switch stuff. Yes, they have a bunch of Switch stuff here. Sealed and regular stuff. This reminds me, I need to do a Switch collection video. I think I have more than enough for a cool video for you guys. So hopefully I'll do that pretty soon here. But you see a lot of collectible Wii games in here. You know, you got Juan the Grudge. Even though that game has bad controls, I think it's a, they, the idea for that game was actually pretty good. You know, they just didn't execute it properly. But um, yeah, Mario Sunshine, another fun game. And some loose Switch games here. Uh, you got the Joy-Cons. You know, just a lot of cool stuff I think a lot of people take interest in. I got to admit, the Switch has been a really fun system to collect for. So I'm really enjoying that one. And here's a quick look of the games behind the counter. More of these are like like the inbox Super Nintendo games, Game Boy games, NES games, things like that. You know, some of the sealed stuff, I would say. I actually saw a couple of games I wanted here, but you have to wait until next time. Plenty of NES games, as you can see here, for the old school NES collector. You know, I need to look through this section again because there might be a couple NES games I want for the collection. But uh, I love how they have them here where you can see them and the prices are visible. So definitely you'll find something here for the NES system. Also, too, does, do people still use the actual old school NES system or do they use like more like clone systems these days? You guys let me know what you think in the comments because I always I never really see anyone playing their NES system. I always see them playing their games on like these clone consoles.
Out of all the games I have in my collection, the PS4, I think I have the most for. This has been an exciting system to collect for American, PAL, and Japanese. There's just so many good games, indie games, just physical releases for this system. I just, it's just amazing. I never thought like I would get like a system past the PS2, but uh, this one is it. But anyways, guys, that was Graham Games. Definitely check them out if you're in Washington, an awesome store. I have links in the description. And now let's take a look at what we got. Before I get into that, guys, I want to tell you guys about a new upcoming game called Unicorn Overlord. Yes, this is a game coming from Atlas, and the art style is done by Vanillaware. Now, with a company like that attached to this, I feel like this is the rebirth of strategy RPGs. You forge alliances, liberate kingdoms, and explore a massive, beautiful world. Now, I feel like most of you will probably compare this game to 13 Sentinels, but unlike that game, this game pretty much focuses on strategy and tactics, rather than emphasizing on narrative like that game did. From what you guys are seeing here, you could definitely tell this game plays homage to old school 16-bit and 32-bit RPGs. I'm really feeling like this game has a lot going for it. Strategy unit building, create alliances with various classes and races, Vanillaware's prior strategy RPG experience, and auto battle system. Yes, you can let the game run its course while you take a break. The game has 40 to 50 hours of gameplay, and that's not just the story. The game will be available March 8th on the Switch, PS4, PS5, and Xbox Series X. Definitely check this one out, guys. Here's Star Fox Adventures. Now I actually had this game before, but I, I got rid of it through a forced trade unfortunately, but this copy is actually better. Now a little history about this game, it actually was supposed to come out on N64 as Dino Planet if you guys remember that, but then they decided like they didn't want to, they didn't want to take the chance of like just starting a new IP so they slapped the Star Fox name onto it. And I think the game did pretty well despite, you know, people wanted it to be a Star Fox game. I'm looking forward to playing this one and kind of like going expanding like the Star Fox universe story because I don't really know too much about it. That I mean, I know about the first two games, uh, which is Star Fox, Star Fox 2, which is now official, and Star Fox 64, which is the best game in the series. Oh, yeah, and Assault, too. So those games, I know the lore of that one, but those games, but I don't know too much about Star Fox Adventures, which I plan on changing that soon. <laughs> Here's Ace Combat Assault Horizon Legacy Plus. Now I had the original version already, but I was always looking for the Plus version and I finally found it at the store. Uh, I believe this one is more compatible with the new DS, uh, 3DS system, you know, for graphic capabilities, they add extra content, and they fix a lot of issues that the first game had. So looking forward to trying this one out, but you guys let me know what you think about this one if you played it. Here's Final Fantasy IV for the Game Boy Advance. Now I completed my Final Fantasy collection for the Game Boy Advance, at least out of the main series. Now Final Fantasy IV was the first game I saw back in the day. It was actually known as Final Fantasy II on the Super Nintendo. I don't know which version is better between the two, um, but I have this version and I plan on playing it through. Hopefully I'll enjoy it. But you guys let me know in the comments, you know, what's the best version of Final Fantasy IV. I think the actually Nintendo DS one is actually pretty good. That remake they did is actually well done. That's probably the best one, but still, like having this one, definitely gonna play this. Here's Rally Cross 2. Don't know anything about this game. I know it was on the cheap and I was looking for a pretty cool racing game. So hopefully this one is good. You know, I have like nostalgia for like 989 Studios. They brought a lot of classic titles to the PlayStation back in the day. Uh, Siphon Filter, uh, freaking, what was that other game? Cool Borders. Um, what else did they do? There's a lot of games that are like, oh yeah, Jet Moto. That's the one I was looking for, Jet Moto. I don't know if they did uh, Cool Borders, but yeah. Jet Moto series, so 989 Studios. I, I don't know if they like, uh, like, like, like they were stopped. I think they were like absolved into another company, but yeah, you guys let me know. But anyways, I wanted a cool racing game, and this game was on the cheap. 
Alright guys, so don't laugh at me, but I am trying to rebuild the N64 collection again. Man. Yes, um, and I had to start with Resident Evil 2. I mean, to be honest with you guys, Resident Evil 2 on N64 is like, it is a true gem. Because nobody thought this game could like actually work on the N64. But it took a lot of hard work uh, that the company, the, the developers put into this game. I forgot who, who Capcom hired to make this. And they did a good job. And I think actually Resident Evil Zero could have came out in N64, but it would have been an expensive game with all the stuff they would have to do. But the Resident Evil 2 engine is so brilliant. And a lot of like people today use that engine to kind of like make hacked games of Resident Evil, which is kind of cool. But Resident Evil 2 on N64, definitely a cool game. I don't know if I would choose it over the, the PS1 version, but still, you know, it's just like, it's just brilliant that this game actually exists. And um, I had to add this to the collection. Battletoads for the Game Boy. This is actually a very different version from the NES counterpart. It's his own game, own levels. Actually a lot of fun and it's not hard like the NES version are all, pretty much all over the place. One of my favorite levels in this game is actually the Brain Chase level which was taken out of the Battletoads arcade game which I wish they would have kept it in there. But um, glad that level's in this game. It's a lot of fun with the other levels as well. Um, not a long game but definitely fun. Especially if you like the Battletoads lore I would say. It's definitely something you can get into. But happy to have this complete. I may go for a couple or other Battletoads games. I'm not really sure yet. But this is one of the main ones I want to complete. Happy to have it. Here's Fate Unlimited Codes uh, Collector's Edition. Found this at the store, and I was debating on it, but I said, yeah, I gotta take this with me, man. This thing is awesome. So, originally, that I know of, this game came out on the PSP in America, but only as a digital download. You're seeing the footage of that version right now, and uh, it's actually a pretty fun fighting game. I found out it came out in arcades, too. I don't know how popular it was. I mean, I'm guessing this is just popular just because of the name, because the anime did really well. I'm not sure how the game compares on a fighting game scale level. But uh, I had fun with it and had some pretty cool super moves and things like that. And, you know, had some pretty good story elements to it. So definitely, um, I would say I'm happy to have this in the collection. I just wish it was in English. Kill. Here's Crystallis for the NES. Um, my buddy John Houston traded me this game, so I, I felt like I should add it to this video. Um, this is a, like one of those top-down type Zelda type games, I would say. Um, I have the Game Boy Color version, so now I have this, this collection of these games complete. Which version I like better, I, it's kind of weird, but I actually like the Game Boy one better. You know, maybe it's because it has that short length, but I, I'm happy to have this one complete in box. Maybe I'll change my mind as I play through it. All right, so finally, my buddy Ron did a trade with the store, and he got Rule of Rose straight up, which is what he was looking for for a long time. It was funny, me seeing that game, I just didn't really, like, think much of it. So, oh, Rule of Rose, cool, because I already own it. In fact, I had it when it first came out. I even got the bonus CD soundtrack with it for pre-ordering. But he was ecstatic about getting it, and I think he's in for a treat. Now, I did warn him about the game. Though the game looks good graphically, the gameplay is a little bit clunky, and I'm, I'm mainly talking about the hit detection in the game. If you get past that, you know, it's a pretty solid uh, experience. But I would recommend, like, people who first time playing the game, I mean, just, I would just say, like, um, probably get one of those cheat code devices and probably, like, um, start the game with a gun because it will make it a lot more enjoyable, I would think. But anyways, uh, the game has a very deep story, and it really will, will stick with you. You know, it's a psychological horror. It's not too much of a survival horror, but it is, does have its scary moments, I would say. But definitely... A graphical gem on the PS2 and they did talk about making a remake of this game a couple years ago I don't know if it'll still happen, but we'll see but I think a lot of people should experience this game It's actually very well done and well to, to except for the gameplay part You know, that's a little wonky, but if you get past that, like I said, you're good but Anyways, Ron congratulations on getting this game. I'm happy for you anybody else who's enjoyed it happy for you as well All right guys, so that's gonna do it for this video. Hope you enjoyed Definitely check out Graham Games. They have a lot of cool stuff in their store. I think a lot of people will be happily surprised. But uh, remember this, and I, I believe they had this motto. You trade good stuff, you get good stuff. Anyways, guys, Radical Reggie, and I will see you all later.